Good morning from Hong Kong to all of those who are interested in uh, studying architecture. It's an amazing topic. Architecture is an amazing um, discipline. It's a fantastic city to be able to study it. Why? There's always a why for architecture. Now, you may think that I'm a bit serious about all of this, standing with my hands in front of me, protecting myself, but it's also because of the fact that I have been in architecture for such a long time. I have preferred it to any other discipline that is around. I could have studied philosophy, I could have studied sociology, I could have studied politics, I could have studied fine arts. Actually, I did start studying medicine. I was in medical school and I stopped and I went to architecture. Why? As an architect, you have to deal with a lot of contradictions. Contradictions that are around us. You have to work with politicians. You have to work with private landowners. You have to work in villages. You have to work in cities. You have to work with, you know, a couple that wants to build their first and only possible house. So what architecture gives us is a multiple view of our society. Our society then is drawn. We draw the desires of our society. We never work in a complete, uh, what's the word? Complete um, lonely situation. We always work with others. We work for others. We work for everybody else. We never work for ourselves. Hong Kong is a fantastic place to study architecture. Why? It's a city that singular buildings don't really count. It's a city that all of the buildings together make the beauty of this place. It's a city that its architecture makes its landscape, but it's not green landscape. The green landscape is the geography of Hong Kong. The green landscape is the fantastic infrastructure that we're in. It's a fantastic place because of the fact that we are at a moment in the world right now that we need to decide in which ways are we going to go. All democracies are being talked about everywhere in the world. It's not only Hong Kong, but Hong Kong is a young place, even though it has history in it. We need to work with that as architects. We are not politicians. We are not sociologists. We are not philosophers. We are people that have to look and listen in a very, very precise way in order to be able to work with all of these actors in our societies. We need always to work in our society for that society. Now, why is architecture so much talked about these days? It's because of the fact that architecture has a form. These forms allow everybody to like them or dislike them. Architecture is something that has lived with us. We live in it. We live for it. Architecture is also something which is an act. We do architecture. We make architecture. But architecture is also a thing, a building, that has been thought out is a piece of architecture, good or bad. So it is an issue which we need to all learn. We learn as we teach. You who would like to study architecture will learn with us. You would have a voice, a voice of debate. In this school, we make it our business to have a one-to-one -one equal choice of being able to talk about 
the most urgent issues that surround us today in the world. We are from very, very different cultures. We are a very diverse faculty. We are a very diverse department of architecture. Our department of architecture with landscape and also planning and also uh, real estate in the faculty of architecture make a fantastic group of scholars that are coming from all wakes of this world. We have a fine, a fine set of scholars, a very, very good bunch of architects that are practicing. We also have architects that have been educated as architecture, as, uh, in architecture and as architects, but have never practiced architecture. That doesn't mean that they are not architects. That is the most fantastic possibility that, that we have. We can study architecture and become a teacher, a professor, a mayor, a politician, because learning architecture allows us to see the world differently. If you want to be active actors of the society which is going forward, because as architects, we have eyes in the back of our heads. We look back, but we go forward. If you are interested in that, we want you. We want to learn with you. We want to teach you. And Hong Kong is a fantastic city for learning and drawing and thinking and doing architecture. If you are interested in architecture and you would like to come to Hong Kong and do your bachelor studies of architecture in architecture in the city, you have, a, you have plenty of possibilities for um, the follow-up of your studies. You become an architect, well, you actually graduate from the BAS program that we have in Hong Kong, and you decide you like the place so much, you have learned so much, that you stay to go for your master's studies. You enjoy yourself so much in the master's studies that you decide to directly go into a PhD. We offer all of those in Hong Kong. However, after your bachelor's, you may want to have some experience of going around the world and going somewhere else to study in another country. A lot of our students, a large percentage of our students are actually accepted in very, very good universities all around the world, be it in Europe, be it in America. Some of them decide to go around the world, do something else, such as helping, becoming uh, volunteers with the United Nations, working on uh, reliefs in the world, uh, or working in and with a fashion designer, they actually have a lot of possibilities after the BAS. However, most of the students, a large percentage of the students, decide to study architecture to the end of the master's degree. Therefore, two years after the bachelor's studies, they go for their studies in a master. Uh, of architecture. Now, we are soon going to be offering other masters in our faculty of architecture. We are thinking and working on a master of uh, intelligent envelopes. It's a fantastic thing that we're going to put together. If you are going to be with us, you may have the possibility of working with facades and have a master's a specialty in how you design the envelope of buildings. There are possibilities for you to work after the, the bachelor's before you go to a master's study. There's also a possibility for some of you to actually start your own small design businesses. So architecture gives you plenty of possibilities depending on where and what line you would like to uh, follow. So uh, it's quite important to know that education of architecture is not only about becoming a professional in 
the building industry. It gives you the possibility of opening your mind to all sorts of other disciplines in, you know, in the world, but also within the faculties that the disciplines that are related to architecture, but also indirectly related to architecture. The number of students that I know that have studied with me, both at a bachelor's level or even at a master's level, that have completely gone to other places to still look at architecture, but not directly work with as designers, are plenty. So you don't only learn how to design, but you learn how to observe the world and be an active part of it. So I think that um, if you are interested in that, then architecture is a fantastic uh, discipline to engage yourself in. Now, you may also ask yourself, where am I standing? Where is this place? Why do we always have professors, teachers talking within uh, an image of books? It's not because books are an alibi for us to say that there is knowledge. It is because books are the foundation of the way that we can look at the world. Looking doesn't mean only using your eyes, but looking means using all of your senses. Therefore, books are important. This is a fantastic um, library that we have. It is uh, a historian who studied architecture, Kenneth Frampton, uh, who, is, uh, who used to teach at Columbia for a long time, has donated and with the help of friends and alumni of the school and of the Faculty of Architecture, we have acquired uh, a lot of his books. Uh, behind me, there are some fantastic uh, images of, which we have basically framed very simply, of the activities that have happened in the school since its inception, since architecture was founded in uh, the University of Hong Kong. There are many uh, possibilities of going to different lectures. There are lectures that talk about anthropology as much as there are lectures that are talking about cities, as much as there are lectures that are talking about basically how one draws trees and the natural elements in the world. So lecture series, exhibitions, uh, debates, discussions are also part of the education of the architect. What you need to be as an architecture student is to be hungry, is to be somebody who is extremely curious and wants to find out things. If I haven't convinced you to come and study architecture, then I have not been a good architect. Hong Kong is a um, nerve of Asia. It's right in the center of probably two-thirds of the population of the world. And it has a fantastic geographical position because it is only two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half hours from a large part of the Eastern cultures in the world. However, one of the things that is quite important for us is for our students to have an understanding of the world, as I said to be able to speak the language, the architectural language of the world. So, we have programs both in the summer, but also with visiting during term time other countries. In the summers, we have summer programs that take the students away, teach them other ways of seeing architecture in other places. I have personally a program that I take the students a large number of students, 20 of them last year, to Paris. We don't only stay in Paris. Of course, Paris, you can stay in it for years to learn about it. However, within the 14, 15 days that we go to Paris, two weeks, two and a half weeks, we learn a lot about Paris. We go to other cities. Last year, we went to Lyon. This year, we are going to go to Marseille. And slowly, slowly, the students will also be able to compare the relationship of different places, different cultures, and how they deal with architecture, what those policies, politics, and also governances are, and how they allow for architecture to become so much worldly renowned as we know it.
So if you are interested in, again, knowing this world, working with it, then Hong Kong is good, is a good place to do it. Of course, there are other schools that do that as well. But because of our geographical position, the fact that we are so close to Korea, to Japan, to Singapore, to the Philippines, to Indonesia, to India, to Iran, to uh, the whole of mainland China, Tibet, all of these countries allow us to see the world from Hong Kong very differently. We go there, we come back, we draw them, we record them, we design with them, we design for them. But that doesn't stop us from going to California, going to Europe, going to the South Pole, going to the North Pole. There are no limits for us in architecture. So if you are interested in a discipline that has no limits of learning, this is the discipline and the area for you.